Now, uh, as your counselor, I'm here to tell you about drugs and alcohol and why they're bad, okay? So, first of all, uh, smoking's bad. You shouldn't smoke. And uh, alcohol is bad. You shouldn't drink alcohol. Well, and, uh, I can't argue drugs, with that. Well, Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. You do so I've been called a pothead before, but not the type of pothead you're probably thinking of. I do most of the cooking in our household, so I have a lot of hot pots and pans. I also have a wooden tabletop. Therefore, I need to protect this wooden tabletop. That's when I came up with a bright idea that I needed to make a trivet. So that's what we're going to build today. Let's do this one day quick build, and I think it will be a valuable addition to your household. So let's get started. So you may be asking, what the hell is a trivet? Well, here's a picture of one. It's basically a hot pad that's either made out of fabric or wood that protects your tabletop. Before we move on, however, I want to take this damn pot off my head. <coughs> now let's get started on what we need for this project. Now for this project, we're going to keep it simple and only use scrap wood. Now after rummaging through my scrap pile, I found this four quarter mahogany and I think this will be plenty of material. So now that we have our material, I only have an eight inch jointer. So before we clean up this piece of wood, I need to run it through the table saw and get it down to about eight inches wide. So let's do that right now. So now that we have this piece cut to the width that my jointer can accommodate, I'm gonna face plane one side of this board. So let's do that right now. Now that we have one face jointed, I can square up one of the sides. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now that we have two sides that are jointed and perpendicular, I'm gonna flip the board over and take it over the planer to clean up this other side. Now that we have three sides planed and jointed, I'm just gonna clean up the last side over the table saw. So now that we have a perfectly milled up board, it's time to figure out the dimensions of how big we want this trivet to be. So we'll need to grab that pan and place it on this piece of wood. So I'll be honest, I got a little bit lucky here on cutting this board down. Right now we're at seven and seven sixteenths, and I think I wanna cut this down to seven and a quarter inches square. So let's do that right now. So in order to make the cross cut on this piece of mahogany, I'm gonna be using my miter gauge. I've got my fence set at seven and a quarter inches, and now that I have my piece of mahogany resting against that fence, I'm gonna hold the mahogany down and move my fence. Then I'm gonna take a mag switch and place it right against that mahogany and turn it on. This will make sure that there's no kickback when I push that mahogany through the table saw. So let's get started making this cross cut. Now that I have that cross cut made at seven and a quarter inches, I can then rotate my board and do a rip cut on the table saw at seven and a quarter. That way it's perfectly square. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we have a perfectly milled up and a perfectly square piece of wood, let's put that pot on this piece of wood just to make sure that we're still in line. And I think we're looking just fine. So now let's move on to the next step. Before we move on, I ask you to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help out this small growing woodworking channel and I thank you in advance. As a reminder for any of the tools that I'm showing in this video, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now I wanna talk about a real luxury that I have in my shop and that's having a second table saw. Now this is a contractor table saw and this was my main table saw for a number of years. Nowadays, however, I simply keep a dado stack in this table saw, and this makes it super easy if I'm going through using a regular saw blade and switching over to a dado stack and going back and forth. Another luxury that I have that makes this process of creating a trivet super easy is I already have this homemade box joint jig. Now this is set up to make quarter inch box joints, and that's the perfect size to make those grooves in that trivet. So my thought process in using this box joining jig in order to make this trivet is instead of placing the wood in a vertical position and making the cuts and sliding it down with each groove, I'm gonna be putting this in the horizontal position, therefore creating grooves along the entire length of the workpiece, and then sliding it down as I make each groove. Before we use any of these tools, however, I need to measure the thickness of our workpiece. And if I do the measurement, we're right at one inch. So this must have been five quarter mahogany instead of four quarter mahogany, which is great because it gives us a little bit more material to work with. Now, in order to make the grooves in our trivet, I wanna go five eighths of an inch thick. So I'm gonna use a half inch setup block and an eighth inch setup block to make sure that my blade height is exactly where I want it. 
So with my box joint in place, I'm gonna take my half inch setup block and my eighth inch setup block and stack them on top. Then I'm gonna slowly raise the blade until I just barely fill the top of that blade on the top of the setup blocks. Once I have that perfectly aligned, I can then start to set up my cuts. So now that we have the blade height set, I'm gonna take my workpiece and I'm gonna slide it right against the notch that I use for the actual box joint. Then we're gonna make our first cut and then we're gonna to continue to slide it down until all of those cuts are made. So let's get started with that right now. So let's take a look at what we just created. Now you can see I have some beautiful lines in this mahogany now, but there is one concern that I have. I think I may have gone just a little bit too deep with those trenches. So I'm gonna lower the blade just a little bit when we do the cross cuts to make those actual lattice pattern. So let's do that right now and then we'll move on to making the cross cuts. So for these cross cuts, I'm actually gonna remove this eighth inch setup block and only go a half an inch high. So I'm gonna lower the blade until the top of the blade is just touching the top of that half inch setup block. Now that that's all set, I can make the cross cuts. So let's move forward. So in order to make the cross cuts on this workpiece, we need to flip the workpiece over and rotate it 90 degrees. Once we've done that, we can simply make the cross cuts in the same fashion we made the rip cuts. So before we move forward and make the rest of the cuts, I wanted to show you what we're looking for. As you can see, the light should shine through that trivet. Now that we're comfortable with the way it looks, we can go ahead and make the rest of the cuts. So just like with every project, there are a couple of issues with this trivet so far. You can see at the very end, there's little knobs running down the length of the workpiece. And this can be cleaned up very simply just by running it through the table saw. There's also another issue with this trivet that's a little bit more critical. And that's that a piece of this fell off when running it through that box joint. However, I can probably clean this up just by running it through the table saw. So I guess there's a lesson to be learned here. You probably want to oversize this trivet and not measure it to size right when you're starting out. So I'm over at the table saw and I'm just gonna clean up both of those errors. So it was as easy as that to clean up both sides and have a nice even and square trivet. Now that we have that done, I'm just simply gonna take some sandpaper, smooth this out, and then it'll be time to put some finish on it. So while I was sanding this up, I had an idea, and this is why I love woodworking. As you can customize pieces to exactly the way you want them, no matter where you are in the project. My idea was to put a mitered walnut border around this trivet, so that's what I'm going to do. All I have to do is take a look at my scrap pile and see if I can find a piece of walnut. So after looking at all these long cutoffs that I have in my scrap bin, I found this nice piece of walnut that's just the right height. So we're gonna take this over to our trivet and see if we can cut it down and make that mitered border. So if we take a look at this walnut, you can see that it's almost exactly the same height as this trivet. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna create a miter cut at one of the corners, and then we can start working our way around the trivet. So I'll set my miter saw to 45 degrees and work my way around that trivet. One of the things that I like to do when creating miters is to actually line up the miter to the workpiece. Then I can strike a line on the actual miter and create a line where that actual miter cut needs to be. Therefore, I know I'm referencing the trivet versus doing a measurement. Then I can go over to the miter saw, reference the laser on the miter saw, and slowly creep up on that miter. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right here. So after slowly piecing those miters together, you can see that it creates a nice little border for this trivet. Now all that's left to do is to glue this up and put it in some clamps. So now it's time to do the glue up. I'm gonna attach this frame to the trivet and make sure it's fully secured.
Now I know I have a lot of videos that complain about this Bessie band clamp, but this is actually the perfect application for it. Now I'm gonna apply the Bessie band clamp to the miters and tighten it down. You can see from the glue squeeze out how great the Bessie band clamps work for this application. Now I'm gonna apply some water to a rag just to clean up some of that glue. Now that we have it all glued up and clamped up, I'm gonna let this sit overnight. Before we move on to our next step, I ask you to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Also leave a like as it really does help out this small growing woodworking channel. Also, for any of the tools that I'm showing in today's video, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out those tools for yourself. So it's the next day. I'm gonna take this trivet out of the clamps and I'm gonna sand off any of that glue squeeze out. So let's get started on that. So there's not a ton of squeeze out, it's mostly just in the miter joint. So I'm gonna take my orbital sander and sand that down. So now that we have all the major flat surfaces sanded, now I'm gonna soften all these corners and edges. I'll do that with a hand sander. So now that we have this sanded, this thing is almost done. I'm gonna apply some finish on this and I'm gonna use some Danish oil. Now Danish oil is food safe. However, I don't expect any food touching this trivet. Before applying any Danish oil, I always like to take my air compressor and blow off any dust that may be accumulating inside the trivet, especially since it's got all sorts of nooks and crannies. Now that that's cleaned off, it's time to add the Danish oil. So I'm no expert in applying Danish oil. However, I have used it in a couple of projects. It's a super easy finish to use and all you really need is a white rag. Now for this trivet, I'm gonna apply a lot of Danish oil since it does have all these grooves. So it's gonna be really difficult to get into those cracks. When you apply the Danish oil, you simply soak the actual rag with the Danish oil and then simply apply it. And you can see as I apply it here, that wood really pops. So I'm gonna apply about three coats of this Danish oil to this trivet. That should give it plenty of protection to last at least a year or two. Now, if I ever need to apply more Danish oil, it's simple to do. You simply apply the Danish oil on top and it'll be protected for a little bit longer. Now, one thing to realize after putting on the first coat is it's very hard to get into these little crevices. So I'm actually gonna use a paintbrush, dip it in that Danish oil and sort of paint it on in between those cracks. Well, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit time consuming to get into all those little crevices with my brush. However, I got it done and I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. Now, I really like Danish oil because it does leave a little bit of a gloss on it. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Well, more importantly than anything is it fits my pan. So this project is a success in my book. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this trivet build. This was a lot of fun to make and it was super easy. This is something you can do on a Sunday afternoon and have it ready by dinner time. So get out in the shop, make yourself a trivet and impress yourself with this easy build. As always, thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like as it really does help out. Thanks again and take care as always.